because I just found this really interesting tool and I want to share it with you guys. It's called HTTrack Website Copier. I'll leave the link of where to go and download it in the description. It goes through spidering the website, finding all the directories, and downloading the CSS and the JPEGs and you know, optionally the compressed files and you know, things like that. So when you open it up, you'll be presented with this screen. Just press the next button, type in a project name. I'm just going to do test um, base path. Just, you know, unless you need it to be changed for any specific reason, I just leave it like that. And then set this on download websites which will download the website. Not sure what this does. Actually, I'm not sure why any of the rest of it does. Actually, I haven't had it but for a day, so I haven't really messed with it. All I know is that the bottom two is basically if you've already started downloading website, well, website, you can continue if the download gets interrupted or if you've already finished it and just want to re-download the website, like instead of re-downloading the entire thing, just download any new files then you can press that one and then come in here and click URL but and for this we're going to use hackthesite.com or dot org excuse me and then optionally you can add in a login or username and password and all that or you can come in here and capture a URL which we don't need to do and press OK. Set options. Unless you're using a proxy, you'll want to uncheck this. Scan rules, where you can change the scan rules to include GIFs, you know, different pictures, basically, any kind of compressed files, and any video or audio files. Limits for this video, I'm just going to do three and zero. But if you were actually wanting to download a website, like use this in the wild, I would suggest going three and one. The reason being because you don't, I mean, I guess really you could set this up to about four or five. Optionally, depending on how far you want to dig down into the site. But usually three is far enough. Unless you just want to get a complete layout, then I'd go four or five. And then external depth, just one, because yeah, most stuff's going to have some link to Google or to Facebook or to Twitter or YouTube or you know some other big website, and you don't really necessarily want to dig into those sites along with the target site. So you just set that to one, so it'll go to Google and go to Facebook, but it won't actually dig into those sites. And then, you know, you can set the size of any HTML file, set the size of any non-HTML file, site size limit, pause after downloading a certain amount, uh, uh, max time, stuff like that. But I'm just going to use, leave it blank. Flow control, number of connections. Persistent connections keep alive, and then you can set your timeouts. I have pretty slow internet, so I'm going to set that up to 1,200. Links. Attempt to detect all links, even if unknown tag slash JavaScript code, which is obviously good since you're wanting it to spider everything. And then optionally, you can get non-HTML files related to a link such as a dot zip or pictures test validity of all links even external ones will go through and test to make sure every link is valid even all external ones before it actually starts downloading anything so if you have the extra time to do that you can do that if not I just leave it unchecked get HTML files first if you're wanting to get a complete picture of the website without its files just the base HTML coding of the website, then I would, you know, then that's how you would do that. The build, 
You've got a lot of stuff in here. I don't really know what any of this stuff does. So I just leave it default unless you want to learn about it. I've only had this for a day, so I haven't really messed with too much stuff. And then go to Spider, and obviously we don't want to follow the robot rules since we're trying to find stuff that is hidden in the site that might help us compromise it. And then you have browser ID, you can change the uh, user agent to something else. I'm just going to do, just leave it as default. Yeah, that's pretty much everything you need to mess with. Then you press next, and nothing to do here, so just finish. And it starts downloading. And we can come over here and go to our local disk C and my website. Let's go under the test folder. And as you can see, it's already starting to download a whole bunch of stuff. We can go into hackthesite.org. And we can see some pages. Obviously, that we're not going to be able to actually go in and look at them because they haven't finished downloading everything. But and see there again, it's going into Facebook, but it's not going to actually. These are like the external links, but it's not actually going to go and dig deep into them because we only set the uh, thing to one. I forgot to change it back to zero. Admin.hackthesite.org. So see now we know where the admin panel is, and so I mean yeah, you as you can see, just doing that right there showed us where the subdomain for the admins is, which we probably would not have found out. And so yeah, you can see the real value. I mean you can use this to find avenues to attack the site you can find it you know you might find encrypted password hashes all sorts of different things I mean there's no telling what somebody leaves in their directory but anyway thanks for watching if you guys like this video please like subscribe and comment there will be more videos doing tutorials on different things like this and I actually don't know if you can get this on Linux or not. I think it might be only Windows. But don't quote me on that. It probably is on Linux. I just don't know if it is or not. But anyway, like I said, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, please put them down in the comments. And thanks for watching, guys.